Hello and welcome back to my channel and today I'm finally uh, getting to do the one tutorial which I yeah, talked about quite a bit but never actually got around to do it. Now I finally found some time and as the last one for 2021 I thought hey wouldn't this be a nice one and what is it? It is how you use the color mood effect and in this case it is how to use it as a part of a trigger system to create a day and night cycle. I got a little bit carried away while creating this example scenario here, but I'll just go over through the important triggers and then the rest just uh, glance over. So uh, the two important triggers for the color mood are the daybreak and nightfall trigger here, and they both got a timer of 180 seconds each, so that's the length of a day or a night. And then once that time has passed, the color mood changes to default here, in this case for daybreak. And in the case of nightfall, it changes to color mood night. This has been a new addition in the latest add-on. But you also can change to winter, jungle, desert or autumn. So if each of those will be a slightly different uh, tint of the game, so the values of the colors could change. Let me demonstrate that real quickly. So here in the map section, you can actually change the color mode. As you see here, the reds get a little bit strength, stronger. Desert is uh, just a brighter version. And your jungle will have a lot of luscious green here. Also, red stands out a lot more in this case. Then there's the winter, where I think it's a little bit colder, of course. And then night, where it is, well, Okay, and then to have day and night come after each other and then have a proper cycle we activate in the case of daybreak we activate the nightfall trigger and vice versa also the trigger deactivates itself so it doesn't cause some stacking issues or something and also of course here a structure gets displayed that day breaks in the case of daybreak and nightfall says nightfalls as you would expect so in theory, I could basically put every single effect I want to apply on night or daytime. I could put it everything here, but it is way easier to actually understand what you do and find the effects and triggers if you do it separately. And again, you could also use activate a trigger for all of the day uh, effects here and then deactivate all of the night triggers. But yeah, I thought let's use variables. They are a wonderful system and I created a variable here, variable zero. In this case, I called it day night cycle and it's set to one if it's day and if it's night, it's set to zero. And so with those values, so if day night cycle equals one, then I'll do the day things. And if day night cycle equals zero, then I'll do the night things. I worked in the additional triggers here. For example, here during night time, if it is equal zero, so if it is night, I change like the dead unit ID of two swordsmen of the enemies and of militia. So in this case, basically if a militia dies, a new militia spawns, so they are unkillable during the night. And also here, a neat little thing I did is I replaced all plumed archers with impaled corpses during nighttime. But while it is the day, I replace all of the impaled corpses with elite plumed archers again. So they will only be around during daytime, but not during nighttime. But if it is nighttime, then there is, again here, I check if it is a night, day night cycle equals to zero. Then there's attack waves coming from the, those three enemy bases here. And also include a bounty system because there is no economy in this little scenario. So you get tributes for killing enemies. I used a cumulative attribute killed P2. So player one killed 10 units owned by player two. Then I decrease that again. So doesn't trigger for one kill multiple times and then I just tribute use silent tributes here from player two to player one. Okay now that we got over all of that let's take a little look at the scenario itself and see how it all works in action. So we got some uh, Charlotte warriors here for starters but we want to get uh, yeah, a few onages, they are very good for defensive purposes. And then some archers for the backline and yeah, a little bit of infantry so we can block those... Let me stand ground. Block those entrances to our base. 
Okay, so here, during daytime, there is a plumed archer. And that will change as soon as... Night falls. Also here you can see the current value for the day-night cycle, so in this case it is 1 because it is daytime. Also I initialized this value with 1 at the start because, um, yeah, so at, at the start of the game that there, there is day and not uh, either day or night. So the, the default stat because it is... Uh, yeah, it's stay at the t start, so set it to 1 and then everything else in the trigger system will think it is day, even if your day trigger hasn't run through just yet. Like, another uh, reason to why using that variable might be nice. You all stand ground here. I see. We also added the values of various militia, so they are only with half speed and I think have half attack speed as well. And you see the resources are going up, so I can train some more uh, some more skirmishes and a few eagles as well. It seems like for now our defenses are holding all right. At minute six we will be able to attack and we need to destroy all three castles for the waves to start spawning, uh, to stop spawning. So we should probably get some ramps ready because, yeah, they have breached our walls here. Opa. Or maybe we did it with our onages, who knows. But we're still doing fine here, I think. With well, those three guys, we want to get some more champions here. Okay, we'll have to retreat this siege a little bit. It has been expensive, thank you. There we go. And as soon as the day breaks, the enemy does not respawn anymore when they die. And the, the waves also stop spawning. So it's very easy to clean up the rest. Now the elite plumes have spawned here again, but they are luckily no danger to our ramps. That's good. We should also prepare for their next wave, because it is coming at minute 9. That's all looking quite splendid indeed. There we go, the first one is gone. Let me just see how I can deploy a decent line of defense, probably uh, over here. Yeah, since no attack waves are coming from the right anymore. This chalk point here. Okay. Let's switch for this for a little bit here. There is going to start soon. And yeah, maybe the, these onagers are a little bit too efficient here. 
then again, that's something I would address once I actually publish a scenario and not while creating a little oopsie, a little tutorial for the YouTube. Okay, let's get you over there. And I should be able to wipe out both castles during this day. Okay, we go for the castle, please. It's a little bit cramped here, but that's that's fine. And that's the last castle. And there we go. So that is how you use the color mood effect and also how you implement a little day night cycle system. I hope this has been helpful to you and I wish you a lovely, well, end of the year. I will do another one or maybe two more videos this year. Uh, so stay tuned for that. But until that, is to be disclosed. I wish you a great day and thanks for being around here, being such an awesome community out there. I thought this might be a good place to mention this and until next time, have a good one. Bye bye.